Hey guys, Paul DC here. In this new video, I'm going to continue talking about my personal experience with CE5, Stephen Greer's Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind Protocol, which is, as I mentioned in the first part of this two-part video, uh, an active meditation-based protocol that one can execute in order to attempt to contact higher beings from either different dimensions or from elsewhere in the universe. We are talking about advanced civilizations that completely master either organically or inorganically through technology, consciousness technology, and are able to pick up our, our thoughts or our energy signature when we meditate and we do these exercises and hopefully some sort of feedback or communication or experience can be triggered. Okay, um, one small th thought that I'd love to make a standalone video on this, but there's many e evidence that uh, extraterrestrial technology is not uh, divided as, as humans currently a categorized technology. I, sh I mentioned just a minute ago that technology can be either, conscious tech can be either in inorganic or organic. Organic can be the same way that we could be able to, for instance, do astral projection or, or that kind of things without an outside technology helping us to accomplish that mission. But there is or there could be some technology that may be able to uh, boost or enhance these experiences and often uh, as humans we think that that sort of technology is often a uh, silicium based or like traditional technology which is something purely inorganic well the evidence i mentioned uh, there are many documentaries uh, research articles and experiences uh, narrated by people that have uh, events happening to them that there may be or there is actually consciousness consciousness technology that is not imbued on the physical vessels of certain species but according to them it can be organic technology sorry once again about the ambience noise so consciousness technology uh, is for sure going to have a dedicated video on my channel but just to make that a uh, slight difference and when i say conscious technology just try to avoid thinking of a very powerful microprocessor because it is nothing like that it can resemble to something uh, literally organic and still be tech okay with that out of the way my second experience with c5 took place exactly on October 2021. Uh, I mentioned in my first video my first experience which was kind of a dream based and through a dream that it, it wasn't even mine. It was from, from my brother, uh, a relative, right? And in this second experience what I did is I was invited by my family-in-law. They do have a retirement house up in the mountains in a province that is very well known worldwide and it is extremely known here in Argentina for its UFO and unexplained activity and phenomena. There's kind of a very special energy signature in that place. It coincides with, um, with the trace of mountains, which actually they are not mountains, they are called sierras. And people from all over the country and from all over uh, Latin America and also from many other countries go to that specific place just to um, have sighting experiences of lights uh, floating in the air above the mountains. There has been other much more powerful experiences of course but when I was invited to, to their house it was I believe my second time there. It's a really small town. I'm going to put some images as I speak so you can get like the vibe of, of what I'm talking about and the first day I, I said okay I already knew that there was some sort of special activity going on in, in these places and I started to practice once again the C5 protocol just basic meditations as the protocol states uh, in hopes of getting an answer 
But this time, my intention was to have an experience more straightforward than the last one. And by straightforward, I, I don't specifically meant like either physical or recording a video or something, but something a little bit more stronger. Just take the previous experience up a notch, just a little bit, just to prove once again that this was working and it was real. Okay, nothing happened. I did it for like five days in a row. I, I even stayed up late just to, to see uh, I mean the sky and the top of the mountains to see if something happened and nothing at all. On the very last night we had people um, as guests for dinner, just locals that run a hotel over there. And I was quite disappointed to some extent because um, since it was my, my last night it was kind of the last chance I had to see uh, the feedback I had requested, right? At, what, at one point we had already had dinner, we were in between dessert and coffee and this guest, it was a family, it was a, it was a couple with I believe one or two kids they had, like three and five years old. I don't remember exactly if, if they were two or one and the guy was a smoking a fanatic, he went out to smoke while we were dining like at least three times. He couldn't be away without a cigarette. And okay, in this particular point, he goes outside and then he comes back very quickly and he says, do you want to see a UFO? And I, I quickly answered, are you kidding me? I mean, uh, because he asked in, in some sort of a jokey way, like trying to play as a joke or to see if anyone got scared and at least myself quite the opposite. I wanted to make sure that he was telling the truth because if he was, that was it. It was the experience I was uh, waiting for. Okay, we said yes, my father-in-law is also a UFO fanatic. Uh, in fact, he always carries when he's there a set of, of binoculars or goggles just to be able, if something happens, to see it more and more bigger, right? Okay, we went out there and what we saw was literally unexplainable. And I'm not saying that the C5 was the thing that triggered what we saw, because later on when talking with locals in that particular spot, they recognized that many times they do see and explain uh, things and phenomena. But at that point I, I was living through ecstasy. It was a huge orb floating what would have been like 400 meters above the highest peak of the Sierras, meaning it wasn't a vehicle down the road of the Sierra or the mountain with very bright lights. It was literally floating and you could see it kind of like even an oval or egg shaped and you could see blue and red lights spinning around the bright white orb and it was so big that then I tried to measure the distance that must have been like uh, 30 kilometers away from, we, from where we were standing. So the size must have been massive because a plane at that distance is barely perceived as an ant and this was a really considerable sized ball, kind of like a floating golf ball, which one could say yes, a golf, a golf ball is really small but depending on the distance, that kind of diameter represented something huge. And the only movement it did was ascending vertically just a little bit, but it, it didn't move like if it was some sort of aircraft, and certainly it wasn't a drone. If that was a drone, they would have had to be at least 200 drones to produce that kind of, of brightness and that kind of of mass at that particular distance. And then, uh, well, once the, this bright orb took all the attention, we started to pay attention at, at secondary things around the orb. And if you stared quite enough for some seconds, 
we were able to see dots that were perfectly confused with the stars but they were actually moving they were coming in from the large orb and coming out and you could have like one that in a split second it split into three similar small white bright dots then they would join back again then they they would go from point a to point b in a zigzag manner and that was happening all over the place when we started paying attention we figured we figured out that it was much more bigger than the orb itself they were everywhere at least a dozen and we were shocked i mean my girlfriend that who doesn't believe in, in uh, all these things she was quite scared because for the first time it's like her world her entire paradigm of life uh, shattered because there was no way that we could explain what we were seeing so at that point i was uh, very excited and i tried to stay calm and i remember that one part of the c5 protocol says that uh, thoughts are kind of like the whatsapp when uh, these things are happening and by a very clear calm and directed thought if this event was not military produced or something else uh, there could very well mean that these crafts or things we were seeing were uh, either managed handled or piloted or flown by uh, other types of lives to say it in some manner or sometimes according to other evidence these orbs can actually be these beings but since they are not fully in this dimension and frequency that is how we perceive them but they can actually be entire beings um, with their own bodies from whatever they come that they are perceived in in that fashion because they are kind of like in between radio stations not fully here and not fully there that's why they appear in that uh, very bright fashion but okay leaving those technicalities aside what i did was uh, to look straight at the orb and i just closed my eyes for a second and i cast it some sort of invite like the very same invite you have to do when you are doing the c5 with your eyes closed relaxed on your couch for example and basically the invite was paraphrasing it you can come down and get closer because i would love to meet who is on this other end and that's when the most amazing thing happened suddenly a bright tennis ball sized blue indigo blue uh, bright orb appeared on eye level i dare to estimate like between 20 or 30 meters which would be in feet um, around 90 feet away from where i was and i said am i really seeing this and it stayed there and um, for a split second i knew it wasn't just a light it was kind of like the presence of someone or something right and i had to double check with myself if i was actually seeing that and it, and it wasn't a car reflection or whatever and the thing is that at that very place where this indigo orb appeared after i casted the invite there was nothing there was just field and dry branches small trees there was nothing that would have produced that light and the other thing was that my girlfriend also saw the indigo orb and she saw that it was extremely extremely close to us while the other stuff was still happening at the sierra peaks okay long story short she started crying out of fear and as soon as she started crying the indigo orb disappeared entirely and that sort of cross references to what either both dr greer states and many other books like the law of one and other types of evidence uh, says about benevolent either ets or higher beings is that as soon as they perceive they are causing the slightest harm 
not physical but also emotional or mental they just remove themselves from the situation so basically that's where it ended a year from that uh, my my in-laws if that's the right word they of course went back to this place and they had other sightings not of that specific kind but unexplained lights um, floating above the mountain peaks or the sierra peaks so that wraps it up that was my experience in, in those moments i'm more fond of enjoying myself and being present and enjoying the moment and that kind of connection rather than being like a, a typical instagrammer living life through my cell phone i don't really care about gathering experience because i feel like i do already know how some things work and about the existence of, of, of some things that many people also either reject or they are scared to admit they exist or they need like hard boiled proof i don't really mind because i'm not trying to convince uh, either myself or yourselves that these things are real that they do exist they do happen and i just put my experience out there in case anyone is interested in hearing them or practicing this or resonates or even wants to share their story uh, i believe that would be a very fruitful exchange and i would love to hear about your own experiences that said thank you very much take care and see you in the next one